Hi everybody, this is James Tompkins and welcome to another Understanding Finance Nugget. And today I'm going to talk about two rates commonly used in time value money equations. And today's a little bit unusual because these are definitions. And I know, I've called this an Understanding Finance Nugget. And, and do you understand definitions? No. No, you memorize definitions. I mean, I've, I've memorized, for example, that the sky is called the sky. I don't know why it's called the sky. In any case, the first definition is the effective periodic rate. And what is that? Do you happen to know? Well, on a percentage basis, it's the amount of interest made from one dollar or one currency unit, whatever that is for you, after one period. So let me illustrate. Suppose I have a dollar today, and six months later I have a dollar five. Okay, so in other words, it's grown into a dollar and five cents. So here's an example of a cash flow timeline diagram. I'm calling time zero today. Can I make these periods whatever I want them to be? I can, right? So I've decided there's six months. So this is one six month period later. So how much of this dollar five is interest? Five cents, right? Which on a percentage basis is how much? Five percent. So what's the effective six month rate? Five percent. So it's that simple. The amount of interest made from one dollar after one period but on a percentage basis. So, definition number two. The nominal or stated or advertised or sometimes called annual percentage rate or there are slightly different variations of what an APR is. This is one of them. And the easiest way for me to tell you what this is is just to illustrate it. So, suppose a bank advertises that it pays 10% compounded semi-annually. Well, that 10% is the nominal or stated or advertised or APR. Now, unless something specifically tells you, hey, this is an effective six-month rate or this is an effective two-day rate or, or whatever it is, okay, then you have to assume by convention that they're talking about the nominal or stated or advertised rate. Now, this number is annual by convention. So what do you do with this number? Well, it turns out that there's only one first step that you can do with this number. There's nothing else you can do. And the easiest way is to demonstrate, as I said, by example. So we've got a bank that advertises that it pays 10% compounded semi-annually. And by the way, is that an effective rate? It's not, right? Why isn't it? Because it doesn't say it's an effective rate. And unless it says it, you have to assume what? That it's a stated or nominal or advertised rate. In any case, by definition, do you happen to know what the only first step that you can do with that 10%? Well, turns out, by definition, the only thing you can do is divide it by 2. Why? Because this 10% right here, that's annual by convention, and there are two six-month uh, periods in a year. And so by definition, the only first step that you can do with that 10% is divided by 2, in which case we have 5%. And, and what do you think that 5% is? Well, the 5% is the effective six-month rate, which is what? The amount of interest made from $1 after how long? Six months. What, uh, what if I told you that a dollar grows into a dollar thirty after two and a half years? What is the effective two and a half year rate? Thirty percent. What if I told you a dollar grows into a dollar one after two seconds? What's the effective two second rate? One percent, right? In any case, these two rates, either one or both, are used in all time value of money equations, without exception. Okay, and you'll see that in, in future nuggets. So I hope this was useful to you, and I and I hope I see you in future understanding finance nuggets. Take care. Bye bye.